And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. I'm Mike Harrison, and it is definitely my privilege to be with you today. And as always, we're working on your financial freedom. We're going to hit the mailbag today. And by the way, if you have any questions for me, if I can get them on the air, I'd be happy to do so. Uh, send me an email. My email address is askmike at luinc.com. Askmike at luinc.com. Here we go. Hi, Mike. I'm a new member and currently looking for single family property homes to purchase for rent. My, my wife and I want to buy a home close enough to where we live so we can manage it better. I hear you say live where you want, invest where you want, and understand people do buy rent homes far away that they never see. It's hard for us to know that we put money into a home that we will never visit what are the advantages and disadvantages to having a home nearby or out of state great question and then he he does have a two-parter here and i'll hit that one after i address the first one but his second part says you always say invest in landlord friendly states can you offer more details as to what that looks like and this is from jay okay jay um yeah great questions and we'll hit these over the next couple of segments. Let's take that first one. Live where you want, invest where you want. That's a saying we have here at Lifestyles Unlimited. You do not have to live next to your rental property. Now, I know that is a, uh, that's a common perception of people out there that are not real estate investors, uh, but they always believe that if you do own a rental property, it needs to be next door, across the street, um, in a neighborhood you can get to, close by, what have you. Uh, that is not necessarily true, and I'll, I'll give you some reasons, and, and I'll go through the advantages and, and disadvantages. But before I get to those, um, I do want to provide some advice, okay? Whether you live near your property or far from your, you can be seven states away, and this these rules will still apply, uh, or you can be next door, okay? Uh, you need to screen that resident. Uh, screen them, screen them, screen them. That is so critical. And it's, it's such a basic step. It's easy to do. You can have that uh, prospective resident literally go online. You can provide a, a website that they go to, and they'll upload their information. It's all confidential. Uh, and then you'll basically get a report back um, on it. But you need to look at these uh, potential residents. You need to look at them five ways, okay? You need to run their credit. And you may be saying, well, Mike, why, why does credit matter? Uh, look, credit is a whether it's good or bad or in the middle, it's a report card on who you're dealing with, okay? If somebody's got lousy credit, it means they're not paying the bills for whatever reason, okay? Let's not get into some people may have medical problems and that's why they can't pay and other people just choose not to pay, right? That's not that's not any of your concern. You're running a business. So that credit check right off the bat is, is going to kind of give you an idea of what kind of person or persons you're dealing with criminal background check okay why do we do this uh, because you have a responsibility especially if you're uh, you have a small apartment community or a large apartment community um, you can't have uh, and this is this is horrible this is worst case scenario but uh, let's say you rent your property your your unit out to a pedophile and then you've got the single mom with two kids next door what a horrible and you put them in that position okay you put that resident in there that's on you you have a responsibility to your residents um, to uh, do the best you can you can't ensure safety uh, and we're going to talk a lot about crime in this episode as well you can't ensure it but you need to do your best so run that criminal check um, rental history right you're about to rent to somebody uh, are they making the payments right you need to check that employment history yes you want somebody to be employed uh, they need to be banking and in, in, in income uh, that is three times what you're renting that property for um, you know pre-tax is fine but if you're renting that property uh, for fifteen hundred dollars a month you'd like to see that they are they have an income or combined income of at least forty five hundred dollars coming in right you can't uh, 
uh, they have they have more bills than than just the rent. So their employment history and their their income, but screen, 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 and that's whether that property's next door or seventeen states away from you. Uh, that's the most critical. And then I would tell you, um, don't purchase a property that's in a high crime, bad neighborhood uh, area. You're you're just inviting hardship for yourself. I'm not saying people can't do that and do well. These Those are sophisticated uh, real estate investors. They understand what they're doing. Uh, but if you're just starting out, let's, let's try to stack uh, the odds in your favor, okay? Uh, if you have a nice house in a bad neighborhood and, it, and it's high crime, it's more than just uh, potential uh, dangers to the residents of that property. It's also, it, 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 uh, uh, it hits your property values, right? Um, if you're trying to sell it, um, there's going to be less buyers in that area. Uh, and when you're trying to rent it, there's going to be less potential clients. And these are our clients that are going to want to rent in a high crime area. So let's let's stack this. Let's stack the odds uh, in your favor. And then, as always, stick to the Lifestyles Unlimited model. Our model is best product, best price. We're going to fix everything uh, run managed by the best people. OK, and if that's yourself, uh, you want to be Johnny on the spot. You want to be responsible and responsive to the needs of your resident. If you fix everything, uh, you're not going to get any calls. Uh, so fix that property from from the front, from the get go. Uh, that best product, best price, that model is um, it works. It's insurance. It's going to ensure that you get a good person in that property. Uh, so stick to those three things, whether it's it's next door uh, or several states away. Uh, I love, you know, people that give you advice. Um, oh, yeah, you need to you need to have that property close to where you live. No, you don't. Um, there's some advantages and disadvantages to both. But uh, literally, we say live where you want, invest where you want. I used to believe this myself. OK, my first home I bought was in my parents neighborhood. Uh, and then once I finally did join Lifestyles Unlimited and learned, uh, became educated and learned the Lifestyles Unlimited model, I told myself I wanted properties within uh, about 30 miles, right, a, a radius of about 30 miles. Uh, I was self-managing at that time, but it provided me, um, when I started out, okay, it provided me a comfort, uh, the ability to essentially drive by the property. Now I wasn't collecting rent by hand. If that's something you want to do or you want to go visit your residents once a month and say hello and visit with them and and collect the rent, then yeah, you're going to want these properties nearby. Um, if it just if that's how you want to do it, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to have those, those properties um, nearby. In fact, the rent typically is just paid uh, electronically. Uh, my first property, um, they literally mailed the check to me. They mailed it within a, a few days before the, the month started. So I always had uh, the rent on time. Uh, and it was it was sent to me in the mail, even though that property uh, was in my parents' neighborhood. It was seven miles away from my house. Now, I'll, I'll tell you also, when I started out, we're buying distressed properties, okay? We're buying uh, properties that uh, have taken a beating. They need to be fixed. They need to be cleaned up. Uh, we do that for a reason. We do that because we gain an equity capture. But for me, uh, I had never done that before. Um, and it was very hard for me to buy that first distressed property. Okay, The property I bought in my parents' neighborhood was nice. It was already fixed. I was not a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. Uh, I was just winging it right on my own. And I bought a very, very nice house. But once I joined Lifestyles Unlimited, they're like, no, you need to buy the broken house. Okay, So that, that first one I bought, it was within driving distance. And there was a comfort for me to go visit and see the rehab taking place, okay? That first property I went to, geez, probably every three days, um, maybe every four days, sometimes a couple times on, on weekends. I might go on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but I just needed the ability to go visit and see the progress, to go ask questions. Um, those fears were soon abated, though, okay? As, as I started rolling along, uh, I could just call my GC and he'd send me a picture. Or a lot of times there was just, uh, uh, you'd log in to your little site with the GC there and you can get that update, right? You can click on it and you can see videos. Uh, oh, here's where we uh, repaired the, uh, the sheetrock in this room and, and here's where we repainted it and here's the new flooring and, oh, the appliances are, are coming in. So you can just kind of log in or your GC can send you photos or email. So 
You don't have to be close to your house, right? That could be seven states away, and you can have the GC doing the work there, and, and they'll uh, send you photos of it. Now, we typically use hard money when we purchase these properties, and uh, hopefully you've learned what hard money is. Um, if you haven't, send me an email. But what we teach uh, hard the hard money loan, we teach that uh, that that strategy in our two day education class. But a hard money lender, and I'm not going to go into what that is here. But a hard money lender, um, when you go to a hard money lender, they're loaning on an asset based on a after repaired value, right? They know it's a broken house, but they can see essentially in their mind's eye, hey, we're going to do new flooring, we're going to do the paint, we're going to fix the roof, we're going to do the landscaping. And, and all of this is kind of a, a schedule of uh, what needs to be done during the rehab, and there's a value to that schedule. Your hard money lender is going to go check the process uh, and the progress of that property. Um, they're not just going to go, uh, okay, Joe, uh, you told me you did the flooring and here's $5,000. Here's your draw to pay the flooring guy. No, they want to see it. Okay. They may require some, if, if you've been doing business with them for a while, you've got a good relationship. Uh, typically you can send them a, a picture or a video of what's going on. A lot of times they know your GC. Um, the GCs that we use that are rehabbing these properties aren't just doing it for you. They're typically doing it for uh, dozens of investors in, in the same area. So they probably know your GC already, but they're going to verify the progress of that rehab so that they can give you uh, the draws. Okay. They can give you the draws and you can go through that, that process. So again, uh, your eyes don't have to be on the job, right? You can have the GC uh, that is several states away that works for local uh, investors, real estate investors in that area uh, and gets gets the job done for you essentially that way. Um, I will tell you this, that first property that I bought, um, if it wasn't for the reputation of this particular GC that did my rehab, I might not have bought that property. OK, I was uh, look, no one went slower than me. I uh, was very cautious. And uh, in fact, I wasn't even going to buy this property. It was so beat up. Uh, the, uh, the the person that sent me the lead on the property basically told me, uh, Harrison, if you don't buy this, uh, I've got 10 other people that will buy it. So uh, it's time to, to jump in. The water's fine and purchase this property. The GC met me out there um, and uh, metaphorically kind of put his arm around me and said, it's okay, little buddy. I got gotcha. you. Here's what we're going to do. So that GC was a very, very valuable part of my team. Um, very valuable in the beginning. Now, what happened? Uh, after I bought that property, within two and a half years, I went on to buy another 10 properties, okay? And each time I purchased that property, uh, I was less and less involved, okay? I wasn't driving by as much. By the time I got to the fourth, the fifth, the sixth home, uh, I, I, you know, I might check it a couple of times, but I wasn't going by as much as I was that first time. Um, by the time I got to that, that uh, uh, it was house number 11 within the Lifestyles Unlimited model. I think I went to walk the house uh, before I purchased it to check it out, make sure my math was right, uh, look it over, put my rehab budget together, uh, purchased the property, closed, called my GC, and I didn't go back until he was done. So two visits to the property. So you can see how this progresses. Uh, we'll be right back after a short break. Got questions? Call Lifestyles Unlimited at 855-497-4335. The Real Estate Investor Radio Show continues next. A reminder from Del Wamsley, CEO of Lifestyles Unlimited. Remember this. Sellers, motivated sellers are found, but deals are made. It's valuable information. Learn how to find those motivated sellers and get the deals done. Join our free online workshop and learn how to retire in five years or less at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Once again, that's lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Creating the lifestyle you've always wanted. You're hearing Lifestyles Unlimited's Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mike Harrison. If you have any questions or would like to learn how to get started, I'm here to help. Please send me an email, askmike at l u 
inc.com. And speaking of emails, I'm reviewing an email from one of our listeners today, and he's essentially um, trying to get over our, we have a saying, live where you want, invest where you want. He's, he's trying to get past that. He's about to purchase his first property. I know, I know how he's feeling. Um, I felt the exact same way. I wanted that property uh, near me. Look, bottom line, and we have investors that do this, they buy properties several states away. Many never even see the property, okay? You can still manage that property. Look, the tools that we have at our fingertips today, uh, I didn't have those 10 years ago. There is help, okay? You're not all alone out there. Uh, you can self-manage several states away, uh, or you can just hand it off, and you can get uh, a property management company. So uh, there's no disadvantage to uh, having a property that's um, several states over, um, none at all. Now, let's, uh, let's talk about landlord-friendly state. You said, okay, I, I want some more details. What does that mean? Um, here, here's what I want to say about that. First of all, real estate is local. Okay, it's local. So landlord friendly states is it's very generic, and I'm going to go through some criteria that that would make a state landlord friendly. But I'm also going to preface this by saying that there are successful real estate owners everywhere. Okay, everywhere that will even go against uh, the seven uh, things you need to look out for that I'm going to share with you. The reason I say invest in landlord friendly states is I like stacking the odds in my favor. Okay, I want uh, as much advantages uh, as possible on my side um, as I'm going through this, and especially for a new investor. Um, but again, real estate's local, and there's there's people that uh, invest in what you may consider the worst possible place based on these seven metrics, and they're still doing fine. Uh, there's a lot of people that are getting burned, okay, because they're in non-landlord friendly areas. Uh, I just want the uh, I just want everything to be. Uh, in your favor. Um, let me think of it. This comes to mind. Target recently just closed nine stores. Okay. Target. I mean, Target has everything uh, that someone would need. They're not closing those nine stores because there's no customers that are buying stuff. They're closing those nine stores because of theft. Okay. Because of theft. Uh, they're in the business to sell product, right? Uh, they don't want to close these stores, but they're closing nine stores in Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, and New York, all due to retail theft. Now, it's bigger than that. You have to look at the entire philosophy, okay? A city that will not uphold the rule of law, that will not protect business owners, um, that doesn't manage their city business properly, right? Uh, the trash pickup, there's always issues there. The infrastructure is breaking down, vagrancy. Um, if they don't respect themselves enough to uh, run a city properly, um, they're darn sure not going to respect a property owner, okay? Uh, you're a property owner. You're a business owner. Uh, these people have no... They, you're the enemy, okay? You're the enemy. So if you do have an issue in one of these areas... They're not going to rule on your side. So you're, you're rolling the dice. Um, you're speculating. I'll also tell you that in landlord-friendly states, um, there are pockets that are uh, not necessarily uh, a place where I'd want to invest. Um, I'm invested in Houston, okay, certain parts of Houston. Uh, but there are other parts of Houston I would never invest in. So um, the seven metrics uh, to look at to make uh, something landlord friendly, right, to consider an area landlord friendly, one crime uh, to the economy. We want a good co economy. Within that, I'd say beware of what I call a boom or bust market, right? Is there only one type of business in that area uh, that's driving that economy? Um, also, university housing, um, that, look, there are people that do it and they do a great job. They're sophisticated investors they know what they're doing uh, but i consider uh, college towns kind of boom or bust uh, in in a lot of ways what happens is um, you may find a college area and uh, there's huge rent demand right not enough apartments for everybody uh, what happens um, you get to, let's say you invest in that area uh, next thing you know five years later they're building apartments on every corner okay i've seen it happen a third met metric to look at uh, is property taxes right a lot of states have different uh, property tax 
rates. Um, obviously, the higher uh, the property taxes, um, that's going to put a strain on uh, the owner of that property, right? If they're paying more and more in taxes, can they raise the rents uh, to coincide with those additional payments that the uh, the owner of that property uh, is placing? Fourth one, rent control, okay? Rent control. This uh, nothing creates a slum quicker than rent control, okay? Uh, you have people that get elected that have never owned a business, never ran a business, and they think the smart thing to do is put rent control ordinance uh, in place because they want to be resident friendly. Um, it's really not so resident friendly because when you have rent control, uh, the landlord doesn't have enough or the owner uh, doesn't have enough cash flow to keep improving that property, to keep fixing everything, uh, to to take care of it as needed, and quickly that property deteriorates. But, well, thank, you know, thank uh, city council. Everyone's got a cheap rent, but, yeah, they're all getting robbed, and there's rats, and there's bugs, and there's crime, and uh, stay away from those, those rent control areas. Um, you just, look, especially if you're a new investor, uh, it's just another burden on you to be uh, successful. So watch out for um, these areas where they have these restrictions that are going to hinder uh, your ability to recoup cost um, associated with operating the property. Bottom line, look for areas number five, eviction process, right? What is uh, the rules or the process for evicting uh, a resident? It happens. Um, it's rarer than you think if you're following that Lifestyles Unlimited model. I've only had to evict somebody once, okay, on my houses. Only one time uh, with all those those houses that I owned uh, and residents moving in and, and staying and moving out. Um, and this was a guy that uh, was screened well, and he was going through just a very, very nasty divorce uh, with his wife. And the only reason uh, he wanted to go through the eviction process was her name was also... Uh, on the lease. And so he wanted her to have a, a bad mark. So he just stopped paying the rent. I took care of the house. Um, look, there's a lot of emotions in a divorce. Uh, you know, it is what it is, but yeah, we had to, we had to evict him. Tying in uh, the sixth market uh, or the sixth metric on uh, looking at landlord friendly areas. Uh, look at that rental market. I alluded to this uh, with that university housing. Uh, is there good demand uh, in your area or is there too many uh, units that are available uh, in that area. I think there's some Airbnb folks, uh, from what I'm reading, that uh, are having issues. And, and we don't do Airbnb, okay? We don't teach that uh, here at Lifestyles Unlimited. We teach uh, single family and multifamily properties. But um, if you've, you know, if there's just an abundance of available rental property, supply and demand 101, right? Um, that means rents are going to be soft. That means occupancy is going to be soft. Uh, then you'll start getting um, owners will start placing ads. You know, if, if you're invested in in a place, uh, let's say you invested in an apartment community in, in this city and suddenly a, a bunch more units come online. What do you see? You always see those signs hanging on the side of uh, apartment communities. First month free or ninety nine dollars first month rent or uh, then they start going to six month leases. Uh, and it's just again, it's just, um, you know, you're sailing into the wind, right? It's just a headwind. Uh, that's pulling you back from from being successful. So do your homework uh, before investing in an area and see what that rental market is. The economy may be great. Uh, the crime rate may be low. It may have a, a very uh, easy landlord friendly uh, eviction process. But if there's just a gazillion units about around where you're investing, uh, not the best. It's just a headwind. Uh, I'm not saying your property, you know, best product, best price is going to help you through that, right? If your property is more attractive at a slightly lower rent than someone else's, um, look, that's that's how I ran mine. If rents were 1650 in a neighborhood, I'd be at 1625 and my property would be better. It would be cleaner. Uh, it would be functional. Uh, the appliances, uh, everything about my property was better. And I always had a resident in my properties. Now, also, I'll tell you this, uh, there are some areas, and we're seeing more and more of this, um, landlords are having to acquire a landlord license, okay? They do exist. Um, obviously, they're as unique as snowflakes, right? They're, uh, this state wants this, uh, or this city wants this, and this city has this requirement, and that city has that requirement. Um, there are landlord licenses. 
uh, I've been, uh, I have invested in areas where the city actually wants to do an inspection uh, of your property. Uh, anytime there's a turn of that property, that wasn't bad. Like, uh, you know, I, I had best product, best price. Uh, I did invest in another area where uh, it was strange and it's a, it's a great part of Dallas Fort Worth, but I had to pay um, like a landlord fee annually. I had to register my property and, and it was $5. Um, and I could do it online. I'd go to the city's website. Uh, they'd send me a reminder in the mail, um, but it was like a little $5. Yes, this is a rental property. Um, so it, it, $5 here, but what if you're in an area and that's annual and it's $500, right? That could definitely, again, it's, uh, it's a headwind. Uh, so check and see if there is a landlord license and what does it require. Some areas are going to be no big deal, but some areas I can imagine out there um, very constraining, very bureaucratic. Um, you know, imagine, imagine that. So, um, if you're looking for a landlord-friendly state, you're going to look for low crime, good economy, uh, decent property taxes that just just aren't over the top. Um, you're looking for something that doesn't have rent control. You're looking for a state that's got uh, uh, a, a decent eviction process, a, a rapid eviction process. You don't want to be strung out. Um, there's a lot of that out there. Uh, the rental market, you want to check and make sure it's not too soft or there's not a ton of units coming online uh, and check that land landlord license. But remember this, real estate is local, okay? You can find great properties pretty much anywhere in this country. Um, you just have to do your homework. So there is a, a, a listing of, of landlord-friendly states, and I'll share those quickly uh, with you that uh, when I was doing my research that popped up in no particular order. Uh, Colorado is a landlord-friendly, uh, uh, it's got favorable, it's a landlord-friendly state. It's got favorable eviction regulations. Uh, it's got great demand. It's got a good economy. I can tell you Lifestyles Unlimited has a good networking group, a community in Colorado, so Colorado made the list. Alabama's on the list. Um, Alabama doesn't prohibit late fees. Uh, it's got a, a, a pretty low or property tax compared to other states. Uh, actually, it's the second lowest in the country. Um, it's landlord friendly. Uh, if you have a resident in Alabama that doesn't pay rent, it's a seven day written notice is all that's needed. Uh, Indiana made the list as well. Uh, inexpensive housing cost, uh, landlord friendly, only needs a 10 day notice. Georgia, we've got a huge group in Georgia, uh, definitely landlord-friendly state. Arizona, Arizona's considered a landlord-friendly state. Texas, West Virginia, Florida, North Carolina, Kentucky, and Louisiana. I want you to remember it's not the money, it's the lifestyle. Make it a great day, and I'll see you next week. The information and opinions you hear on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show are those of the host, guests, and callers. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.